how to combine particle systems with custom graphics and make them interact together. Today we learn how to time animations in milliseconds and how to trigger periodic events. The full playlist is linked below. Let's go! Again, this technique is very common and extremely useful. First, I need a variable here that will keep track of timestamp from the previous animation frame. I will call it last time. For every animation frame, we will calculate delta time. Delta time is the number of milliseconds it takes our computer to draw one animation frame. It's the difference between the timestamp from this animation frame minus the timestamp from the previous animation frame. Where is this timestamp value coming from? It is being automatically generated by request animation frame method and it's being passed to animate as an argument. It's invisible, but imagine it's being generated and passed here, like this. It's one of the special built-in features of request animation frame method. To use that timestamp, all we have to do is give it a variable name here and the JavaScript will automatically know what we want. Once we used last time to calculate delta time, we assign it to the timestamp from this animation frame so that it can be used again in the next animation loop. Timestamp is only generated for the second animation loop that gets initiated by request animation frame. The first call of animate comes from here and there is no timestamp being automatically generated. If timestamp is undefined, delta time would be none, not a number for the first loop because of this calculation. So I avoid that problem by passing timestamp zero just for the first loop. All other loops will have actual auto-generated timestamps because after that initial call, we are calling animate through request animation frame on line 175. So for every animation frame, request animation frame method is auto-generating a timestamp value, which simply gives us the number of milliseconds since the first loop started. We are giving it a variable name timestamp and we are using it to calculate delta time, the difference in milliseconds between the timestamp from this animation loop and the timestamp from the previous animation loop. When we used last time to calculate delta time, we assign it to the current timestamp so that it can be used again as the old timestamp in the next animation loop. As the animation runs, we are comparing the current and the previous timestamp and we are getting delta time. I pass that delta time to handle particles method. To check if the calculation works, let's just quickly console log it. I can see my delta time is 16.6. Thousand milliseconds divided by 60 is approximately 16.6, so I know my computer is serving around 60 animation frames per second. Each frame stays for around 16 milliseconds before it gets updated and replaced. Let me know if you're getting the same number. If you have a high refresh rate screen, you will get a lower value on delta time because your computer can serve more frames per second. On those fast screens, the whale is also flapping around very fast probably. So let's unify that animation speed for all machines. I know how many milliseconds pass between frames, so now I can use that value to trigger periodic events. For example, I can say something like only update sprite frame in the sprite sheet every 50 milliseconds. Doing this will make sure that the whale animates at the same speed on slow and on fast computers. I'm passing delta time to handle particles, so on line 125 I make sure that value is expected. From here, I will pass it along to update method on whale class. And I make sure it's expected here on line 74. So now we have access to delta time from inside update method on whale class. To use this value to trigger periodic events, we need two helper variables. Timer that will count between zero and a specified interval value. Every time it reaches that interval, it will trigger the event by running some code and the timer will reset back to zero so that it can count again for the next event. The interval will be for example 1000 milliseconds, one second, divided by 50. I want to update cropping area in the sprite sheet 50 times per second. We will handle that FPS here. I say if frame timer is more than frame interval, do something else, do something else. 
If it's more, run all this sprite animation code to increase frame x value and also reset timer back to zero so that it can count again towards the next periodically triggered update. Else, meaning the timer is not yet more than interval, keep increasing timer by delta time. And that's it. This is how you control FPS of a specific object. The same technique can be used to control FPS of the entire animation project if used in the main effect class, and we can also use this to trigger other periodic events. For example, I want a random planet to float by every 5 seconds, or I want the whale to blink every 3 seconds, things like that. Now you know a technique how to time any regularly repeating events in your project. When the timer is more than frame interval, we are resetting timer back to zero. There will usually be some leftover milliseconds that we are just discarding and we are not accounting for them anywhere. This will help with performance because we are not doing these extra calculations, but it also means that this value that suggests we are animating 10 frames per second is actually a bit less. It's actually not exactly 10 or not exactly 55 because we are discarding the leftover delta time rather than accounting for it. If I set this to 60 frames per second, it's actually lower than that in reality. But since we understand this, we can set these values with this in mind, or we can include that leftover delta time in our if-else statement on line 82. I prepared one more whale sprite sheet, which has four different whales on it. You can download it in the resources section below. The way I organized this, every row in this sprite sheet is a different whale. This will be important now. I set this.image to whale 3. This will animate the new sprite sheet and we can now switch to a different whale by adjusting vertical cropping coordinate, source y. 0 times sprite height is this row, blue whale with a tail. 1 times sprite height will give us this different whale design. 2 is this one and 3 is this one. I create a helper variable, I call it this.frame y. I use that variable here and now I want a different random whale every time I reload my page, so I set frame y to a random value between 0 and 4. I need integers because there is no row 1.5 for example. Wrapping this in math.floor means frame y can be only 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. You can try to refresh your page now and you will get a different random whale out of these four every time you do that. I check if it's still responsive. Yes, when I resize the browser window, everything still works. Particles react to mouse, but for this project we want them to react to the whale instead. I can delete this block of code. We keep resize event listener and we can delete these other three. Hmm. Right. Now we need to go up to the custom update method on particle class. This code runs only when mouse is pressed, so I remove this line and also the closing bracket. I want this code to run for every animation frame. I replace this.effect.mouse with this.effect.whale in all these places. Mouse object had a radius value to define the interaction area. Whale doesn't have it, so I go down here to my whale class and I give it this.radius property. I set it to 200, for example. Let's check. Yeah, I think that's it. I save and reload. Nice. Particles react to the whale. That was easy. How can we polish this now? I set background to linear gradient between these two colors. For this project I'm going for Guardians of the Galaxy over saturated colorful space. <laughs> it's more fun like that. Let's make it larger. I want to increase the number of particles and I want to increase max distance, which means more particles will be connected. Be careful when increasing these two values, as both of these have a massive effect on the performance. Well done for getting this far. Our intergalactic space whale is warping space and time, even constellations get out of its way. <laughs> Probably the best thing to do here would be to set the number of particles relative to the available screen area to make sure we have the same particle density on a small and large screen. For now I will go with these values.
I like how we have star constellations coming from the right and then they get disturbed by the whale. We can tweak the interaction by, for example, adjusting this dot friction value. We can make the stars harder to push by setting friction closer to zero, or we can make them easy to push and light by setting this value close to one. We never want to set friction to one or more than one for this effect. I can change the speed of scrolling stars here, make it slower. This dot curve affects how far up and down from the middle of the screen the whale goes. Value we pass to rotate method here will determine how much it will turn as it swims. Feel free to play with these values, it should make it very clear what they do. I think 0.4 is the right value for this here. I go back to height tam 0.2 here. This curve value should probably be relative to the size of the whale rather than to the size of the screen. Hmm, there are so many things I can do here. I think the stars need to be scrolling past much faster. How about 1.5 pixels to the left per animation frame? I actually don't need space between stars and the top and bottom edge of canvas, so I can simplify this line of code. Also, times 2 is enough here to cover the space between particles as they reset horizontally. I need to make sure we copy this and we use the same values in reset method. I test it. Yes, resizing still works. We are using images in our project. It works for me because I'm running my code locally, so all images are loaded instantly. If I wanted to put this code online, I need to wait for images to be fully loaded and available before we run any JavaScript code that depends on those image files. The simplest way to do that is to put all our code inside a callback function on event listener for load event. I cut it and I paste it here like this. Do you have any other ideas on how to improve this? How about the stars slowly returned back to their original position as the whale swims past them? To achieve that, you would have to capture their initial positions. You would have to keep in mind that the initial position is scrolling to the left. And then you could say, if particle's current position is not the same as their initial position, move slowly towards it. For example, by one tenth of the distance. It's a challenge for you, can you implement it? If not, don't worry, I will do something similar with a different effect in this series. Keep watching if you want to add more techniques to your creative coding toolkit.